Hello and welcome to Tales and Trails. I'm Minnie Menon. For far too long, art has been the reserve of the well-heeled, the collectors and art enthusiasts in India. But an interesting public-private partnership at the historic Red Fort in New Delhi is changing that. It is taking the finest Indian artists to the most populous tourist hub of the country. And there are many lessons to be learned from it. Take a look. Wind your way into the Red Fort in Delhi and soon you will come to a museum which is the first step at making this old Mughal complex the art and museum hub of India's capital. Drishikala, a partnership between the Archaeological Survey of India and Indian arts company DAG is a celebration of India and 200 years of its art. And it has been quite an eye-opener especially for those who set it up. I think it's the experience has been absolutely fascinating. We had no idea how the people will respond, you know. And uh, we would initially we were thinking the people will just come and walk out, but it's not the uh, it's not how it has happened. Um, we get on an average about three to four thousand people a day, and uh, a large percentage of the people, I would say over 90% of the people have no understanding about art or they have not been to a visual arts museum. It's the true democratization of art, I would say. You know, we were like, you know, we have been running galleries, but we have never had more than 10 to 20 people a day. And suddenly this scale has gone by 200 times over, 300 times over. Drishikala's success owes a lot to its location. It is at the Red Fort Complex, which is one of the biggest tourist draws of the capital. But the bigger challenge was to ensure that crowds stayed back to spend time here. That was done by some good old storytelling. Starting with how the British first saw India through a collection of over 100 sketches by 18th century artists Thomas and William Daniels. So at this upper level of the gallery, up here among the, cr the clouds, we have an entirely English view of India, presented, if you like, though, for the first time. It was the first time the whole set has been displayed together anywhere, but displayed dis intentionally to an Indian audience to see what Indian audiences make of it. If you go down one story, you have a different, you have a, a story of encounters. On one side, there's an exhibition which is focusing on portraiture. Now, of course, portraiture was a very well-established genre within Indian painting for a long time, from the Mughal era, for example. But portraiture changes quite dramatically as a result of the encounter with European techniques, with European styles, with European media, like oil painting. And so that exhibition tells the story of, as it were, the expansion of the vocabulary of portraiture within India, from oil painting to photography, indeed. And then on the other side, the focus instead is on a medium, it's on printmaking and the way in which, again, printmaking had existed in India, but the technologies of it change as a result of a European encounter. And also the purposes of it change, including popular printing and political uh, works in the, leading up to the, the freedom movement. And then on the ground floor, it's entirely Indian. I mean, it's devoted to works by the Navratna, the, the, the nine unexportables, the national treasures, those artists whose work is deemed so important to the nation that you cannot export it any longer. It was in the 1970s that the government of India identified artists like Raja Ravi Varma, Rabindranath Tagore, Jamini Roy, Nicholas Rorick and Amrita Shergil as national treasures. After the success of Drishikala, DAG is now working with the ASI to develop two more museums in the Red Fort complex. The success has also egged Ashish on to become an evangelist to promote art, especially among students who are frequently brought in for workshops here. After all, the connect with art must start young. I think art helps in sensitizing uh, a human being. I think people have a better understanding. I think it's so important for people to, to know their history, to know their origin. I think, it's, so that, I think in that sense, it's really, really important for people, uh, for the students, for the children, to be exposed to art at a very young age. I think it should be mandatory in the schools, for the schools to be taking children to a museum once a month. 
you know, those kind of things, those radical changes have to be brought into the Indian, Indian, Indian education system. You know, these things have to be introduced. It has to be made mandatory. Yes, the schools have to take children to a museum. And it's a, it's a, it's a huge task. It's, about, it's, it's a task about educating 1.25 billion people. Like just let me give you the pure numbers in terms of the people who, who buy art in India. You know, I don't think there are more than 2,000 people. So look at a country like 1.25 billion people and 2,000 people, people buy art. And it's not that people don't have the money. People have the money. People have, uh, and it's not that people are not smart enough, that they can't relate to art. People have that intellect. People have money, but there's no understanding, there's no exposure. There's no understanding because there's no exposure. An awareness about art will not only help save it by ensuring future generations understand the rich legacy we enjoy, but also be a draw for tourists keen to understand India. No one comes to India for its art and museums. No one comes to India. Like if you just look at the pure numbers, like India gets 10 million tourists in a year. And that's the number. And 10 million people go to just Louvre alone in Paris. But if India was to open, let's say, thousands of museums, hundreds of museums, um, you know, things would change. People will actually start looking at India to just visit India for, it, for, for museums for art, which doesn't happen. The crowds of the Red Fort in Drishikala are a reminder of why we need a renaissance in the way we plan our museums and heritage sites. We need many more vibrant centers that celebrate India's legacy and ensure that the younger generation connects with it.